what I'm going to talk about and do some demonstrating is some of the concepts that I use to develop a vocabulary for improvising. And the method that I use is, well, especially since I, I started out, um, let, I started out, I would have to say, in a jazz context. So this idea of improvising was something that uh, came naturally to me quite early on because of the way that I started to study the drums, which was from a drum instructor starting in 1963 who was a jazz drummer. And I went through a lot of the, the methods, the typical methods of learning a jazz vocabulary and, and just the, the fundamentals of drumming, including re rudiments and, and reading. So when I started to play with people, it was natural for me to improvise. And one of the methods that I use is pretty much a timeless method. It's you hear something on a record and you love how it sounds, and so you figure it out. You transcribe it or you just figure out what the idea is, and then you learn how to play it. But then after you learn how to play the original idea, the important thing is to make it your own, which is something that actually is pretty easy to do because each and every one of us sound completely unique. And as much as you even try to sound like somebody else, you won't. You'll sound like yourself. And uh, so what, what I ended up doing is um, transcribing lots of different drumming ideas and then working with the ideas in a relative, I would say a more, more or less systematic way. So I would take the original idea and on this handout that I gave you, we're gonna start with the first line and it's a Max Roach melodic idea that I heard on an album that he did with Dizzy Gillespie, and it was just a duo album, Live in Paris, and he played some beautifully melodic phrases, and I just took like one bar of that phrase, and then I started to work with it. And, and I'll play the phrase for you, the one bar phrase, and then I've, I've written for you four bars. And so what I, the first idea that I did is I took the phrase and played it as a one measure phrase, four beat phrase, and used it as a question answer. Because melodically, when I play it, you'll hear it has this kind of, I, it gives you an, an idea of like, here's the question, here's the answer. Question, answer. So this is the first step that I took. Then the next step is I start to break those rhythms down into, like here's a four beat rhythm. You can also make the rhythm a three beat rhythm or even a two beat rhythm. So now I have more phrasing possibilities. If I leave some space, make it a three beat rhythm and, and I'll start to demonstrate some of uh, these ideas for you now. Now the side two of the of this handout, we really don't have to go over here because it's, it's for you to take home and it's essentially a recap of everything that I'm gonna be talking about. So when you go and do all your classes tomorrow, you probably forget everything that I talked about here today. You can remind yourself of it <laughs> when you get home because coming to PASIC is like major information overload. Believe me, I know. Um, so here's the original phrase that I heard Max play on this record. So it's like, I'll, take, I'll pick a tempo like right here. A one, two, a one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that's the idea, it's very, easy in a way because the sticking is just foot, right, left, foot. But the orchestration, let me see what it, it's. Uh,
That's so, I heard that as like the part one, and then I went. So if we put those together, I'll play the whole four beat, four measure phrase. One, two, one, two, three. So one of the things I'm thinking about here is you hear how I use those melodic ideas, but then I'll leave some space and I'll make it a three beat phrase. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, one. And as much if I play some time. So here we have the pulse. So I want that pulse to be just as present during the soloing. So it still feels like time. That's the other thing I'm thinking, is to connect this up but still have that pulse flowing. Like a bass player could play it. So there's, you, you hear this question answer idea, this thematic development, some melody and, and rhythm and pulse, and the whole thing flows with a pulse that it's easy, hopefully, for people to play with me, you know, to play for the bass player, for the keyboard player, for the saxophone players, the guitarists, whoever it is that I'm working with. So take, you know, try that phrase out, because it's a beautifully, Melodic phrase. And and then mess around with it and and think about the tone that you're getting uh, from each and every drum. This the actual sound. So that's the first line that, that, um, that I have written out there. So then the next section that I want to go through, it it's, uh, has some similarities to that um, in that I start with a four note 
phrase, but then I turn it into two and three note phrases, so then I can start to make threes, six, five, seven, nine, you know, longer phrases. And, and so I have a, a series of paradiddles with flams on the diddles that I worked out. And I started to mess around with this idea of playing a flam on a diddle. So what a diddle is, if you don't know what a diddle is, it's essentially two notes with one hand. Like in, in the paradiddle, it's right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. And the diddle is where I, I'm going to put the flam. It actually started, if I back up a little bit, it started with me practicing flam taps. And, and I started to notice something really interesting about flam taps. Um, is that once I started really moving them around the kit, I could see that it's the same rhythm as practicing the jazz ride beat with both hands at the same time, but they overlap. And so that's a, I've found that I've gotten the most chops development, uh, especially in my right hand, from practicing and playing the ride cymbal. You're playing this, this beat. So if I are and if I start with the other hand. You guys know that tune, Moanin' by Art Blakey. Now, when Art Blakey plays a shuffle like that, he's essentially playing a flam tap. His beat is this. So I found that very useful to, to discover that because I want to be able to be free with both hands in a, in a pretty equal way. So I started getting into this idea of playing the flam taps and then putting them on the paradiddles. And that's how the, the flam ended up on the diddle. So if I play with a swing approach. now. I want, I want to uh, make a point that these ideas are not meant to be exercises. And you can definitely practice them like exercises, and I do recommend that you practice these ideas or anything that you're working on over and over again until you get to the point of internalization. But if you just approach them as exercises, Mentally, you're not really thinking, okay, here's the vocabulary that I can use for improvisation. So, I'm going to play the, the, the uh, flam paradiddles. And how I first started playing them is real swinging. Like, like there's the paradiddle. And, and definitely not like a, a, a marching band approach. Very loose where I'm letting that stick really come off the head. One. And if you guys know, then there's like four versions of the paradiddle. And then you put the diddle in the middle. And the diddle in comes in the front.
and then the diddle is like a pickup, like one. If I go through all four of them, then the second one, the third one, and then then back to the beginning. So I started working through these, and they're really, you can get very fluid with them. These sticking's been around for a long time for a good reason. It's just mixing singles and doubles, and then they, and they flow real easy once you, once you spend some time with them. So I went from playing them like that, let's say, eighth notes, and I wrote that's like number one, two, three, four on your handout, the second line down. One, two, three, four. And you can play them. And this is something I started to learn studying Indian music is a lot of the, the, the Indian drummers, they play the same thing, the same rhythms, but at different speeds. So we can, we're going to go now from eighth notes to eighth note triplets to sixteenth notes. All right? So it, would, it sounds like this. So it's one, two, three. One. Now the diddle in the middle. The one, two, three, four, 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 one. Now the diddle in the front. It's a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, three, four, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. <laughs> so y you'll find when you spend some time with that, that's it. it it doesn't take long to get, to get pretty free with that. And then the, the next line down, the, the number five on that sheet, is doing the whole thing but starting with the other side. And that was, you know, starting with the left. And you can start anywhere in that pattern. Now, that pattern moves nicely. It's like, it's like right in the first page of stick control, really, that, that pattern of going to the, fir the primary paradiddle, to the diddle in the middle, the diddle in the front, the diddle as a pickup. So, you know, work on it. So you, wherever you end up when you're improvising, if you end a phrase with your right hand and you want to start the next phrase with your left hand, that, that's an option. You want that to be an option. So then the next thing that I started to do is, is break those down into threes and twos. And so if we look at number six, example number six, it's the first of uh, groups of threes, and those threes can be played as eighth notes, sixteenths, triplets. You can play them in quintuplets or septuplets or anything. It's just a group of three. And the stickings, uh, oh, sorry, no, that's when I did the flam taps. Okay, so six and seven are the flam taps, which I, which I actually started with, you know. <laughs> or the, and then uh, eight is four, four, so that alternating threes, number 10. So where we go with that is let's get into the, the fives in the seven. So if we just take the first half of a flam tap, that's two, one, two. So if we go. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one. So 
that's number 11. And it, it's, you know, just spend a little bit of time with that and you'll find it starts to flow. 12 is the same thing, but starting with the left hand. And then we can start to now take those odd phrases and make them even, put them together so they're even. And then they're, of course, they're going to be much more usable in context. So first, in the simplest way to do that, and it makes a lot of sense and feels good and sounds good, is uh, example 13, which is three and a five. And you put together a three and a five, and we have eight beats, like one measure of four, four times. So one two three one two three four five one two three one two three four five one two three one two three four five one two three one two three four five. What I did just then is the, instead of just playing two bars, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, we just did, I did two threes and two fives. Of course, it takes up the same amount of space, but now the phrasing is starting to extend. So instead of one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, taki, 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 one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So then I just, I did four threes and four fives. So it's pretty systematic, really. You can think about it as long as you establish this theme. Like, here's the idea, the three and the five. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'll do one three and one five. And then three, 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 five, five, five. And that's a nice four bar phrase. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. And then the next step is seven and nine. You know, so seven, we put together a four and a three. The four is a flam tap. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then we add a three. And I like to use the, the right, right, left, or left, left, right version of that three. I find that as I get faster, it's much easier to play than the alternate sticking of uh, it's just easier to go so for my seven I generally do like non alternating one two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven one Or 
or starting with the left. And the nine is four plus five. So the flam tap is four. One, two, three, four, and then a five. But that one alternates when you use that Swiss triplet type sticking for the three. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, five, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Now we put those two together and we got 16. So we're back in even, in the even land. So. So here's some ideas of how that, can, that stuff can sound. So one of the things you'll notice is if I play those flam taps on the beat, and I play like a group of three, now they're offset. All right? Now, so check this out. And, and I'll put, I'm going to just turn a metronome on. It's uh, 72, kind of slow. So, and I. One, two, three, and then they come. Triplets. Sixteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 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 seven, eight, nine,
six, seven, So there's a lot of material there for you to take home and have some fun with and see what ideas you come up with. And it's kind of what I've just been discovering as how if I play those flam tabs and they're on the beat and then you do like a five or a three, an odd group, and then you do the flam tabs, they were just shifted off by one sixteenth. And that's a very, it's kind of syncopated and cool sounding. And then you can bring it back around uh, to the one, to the middle of the beat. So the last, and as you can hopefully hear, I'm not thinking about those like exercises. They're now part of my playing, though when I was a kid, they started as exercises, like learning the rudiments. And, and, I, and I play them in a, in a way that I would call the drum set technique. It's not drum core technique, and really one of the primary differences between drum set technique and drum core technique is I'm not trying to match stick heights with anyone. You know, I'm just playing, playing the drums, and I'm wanting stick heights to be related to time. And for instance, you know those old metronomes that go like this, click, click, click. The way they work is because they fill up a certain amount of space, and that space gives you the even time. And as it gets faster, the space gets smaller. As it gets slower, the space gets bigger. So when you play the drums, that's a very natural thing to do, is to fill up space. It's more unnatural to try to control the space only thinking of dynamic level. You know, I'm thinking about the space between the notes as my stick is in motion.
Well, if you look at the bottom of that page, the box, the little box there, that's this Tony Williams inspired flam kind of uh, phrase that sounds really, really nice played between two toms. So you really hear this. So the idea in the sticking, you'll see I wrote out the sticking. It sounds like the flam, when I heard Tony Williams play this kind of stuff, the flam is actually accented. It's not like a traditional uh, flam where the flam's a grace note. The flam is, it's just, they're both pretty strong. And so if I just isolate the left hand, you hear the rhythm of one, two, one, two, in the four beat version, like one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. The bass drum plays the last note. One. So then I went through what I typically do. I turned it into a three note fr phrase. One. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. Or. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. seven and nine, right? <laughs> so those are... So, so I, I have a lot of building blocks that I use to improvise with. So there are like predetermined licks that I have control over, but then in the moment, I let the phrasing occur. And, and sometimes I'll play, like I'll... I'll play exactly what I just played for you. I'll play like, you know, seven and nine, seven, 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 nine, 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 something like that. This is derived from my Indian studies where it's more or less since systematically worked out with ideas like that. But sometimes I might do that in order just to relax for a minute <laughs> and then clear some space for something else to occur. So I like to have building blocks, keep things flowing and also Keep it, like I talked about, keep it in time, but not always relying upon playing time to stay in time. Like still being free without necessarily, you know, playing, um, like. A groove, right?
So these, you know, these are a lot of the ideas and the building blocks that I use in any situation that I'm in. So, so they're not necessarily related to a genre because they can be used in a jazz setting, they can be used in a rock setting, or when I play with the Indian musician. So in a way, it's like just how you play it. The volume, the attitude, and the orchestrations can change from setting to setting. But by having a large, let's say, repertoire of ideas, that's why I could do, like for the last two years, I've been doing these six-month journey tours and I play a drum solo every night. And I get, you know, it's always in the same song. <laughs> always in the middle of the set. And I try to play a different solo every single night. And it's not like radically different from night to night, but it's pretty different from night to night. And I try to not repeat the same phrases, the same ideas. It's, it just has a general construction where I know it's gonna start in this shuffle beat and it's gonna end in this shuffle beat. And, and then I try to keep everything related time-wise. So I don't just sh suddenly stop the pulse and, ch and change the time. If I do change the time, it's, it's always still related to that, to a pulse. So just, I mean, this whole clinic is improvised, so. <laughs> so I'm just making it up as I go here. <laughs> so, so for instance, there's like the it's about like eight. That's like eighty. So it's like the sh the tune is like.
All right, everyone. I think we're out of time. <laughs> so thank you so much to all of you for being here. Of course, to all my amazing, the companies that support Basic, Sonar, Zildjian, Vic Firth, Remo, DW Pedals, Simpad. All right, everyone. Thank you very much, Joshua.